here's the format for the next two weeks at least, possibly for the next 30 days. And then as I've mentioned before, we're going to start phasing out this 830 call, but don't sweat it. We're going to replace it with something better, more news to come. I've got five things that I want to talk to you about. Not the same five things every day, but on a rotating schedule. And, and those five things are lead generation and lead conversion. Lead follow-up. Work like a farmer, think like a hunter. Using previews to build relationships. And, and if it helps you, if I give you numbers as I'm going through this, that's fine. Number one is lead generation and lead conversion. Number two is lead follow-up. Number three is using previews to build relationships. Number four, creating emotional proximity. Five, listing your way to success. Now, what we're going to do is every day we're going to hit one of those topics. So you've got the next five days, and then we're just going to hit the start over button. The following five days, we're going to do it again. And then here's the logic behind this decision. In prepping for the time that I spend with you every day, I always ask myself questions. And one of the questions that I've asked is if I could if I could teach all of the real estate agents who are part of Rainmaker Training and Coaching one thing that would enable them to build a more successful real estate business, what would the one thing be? Well, the one thing actually ended up being five things. And those five things are lead generation and lead conversion, lead follow-up, using previews to build relationships, creating emotional proximity, and listing your way to success. So we're going to hit these hard for the next two weeks at least, maybe the next 30 days. And here's my goal. My goal is that we're going to be able to look back and see improvement in all of our real estate careers on these five things. Because if you're going to master anything in real estate, these are the five things that you want to master. Today is lead generation and lead conversion. You have three buckets to work from. Previews, mark, sorry, prospecting, <laughs> marketing, and repeat and referral business. So if you, if you draw a picture on a piece of paper and just put three buckets at the top of the paper, you've got your prospecting bucket. You've got I'll do it for you. I still want you to do it. All right. You've got three buckets. And you have prospecting. You have marketing. And you have repeat and referral business. Now, your goal in all three of these is to, hold on a second, lost my markers. <laughs> your goal in all three of these is to move opportunity into a pipeline, into a funnel. Every day, you want to add people to that pipeline. You want to add potential buyers and sellers, and mostly I'm going to focus on the seller side of this. In prospecting calls, for example, you're prospecting for sell by owners, expired listings, and circle prospecting. Now, I know that as soon as I say this, some of you shut down. I don't want to do that. I don't want to prospect. I don't like cold calls. My answer to that would be fine. Don't do it. As long as you're hitting your goals for listings taken and you're doing that without prospecting, then keep doing what you're doing. If you find yourself not hitting your goals, then possibly look at this. One of the reasons that we don't like to prospect is we don't like no. Nobody does. I want to change the way you look at this. In reading Never Split the Difference, here's one of the things that I got. Get to know as quickly as possible. I want to hear no. So maybe on a 
expired listing call, you start the call with, are you interested in relisting your home? What do you think you're going to hear? No. Now, what you're doing by that is you're giving the other person the opportunity to feel safe, to feel in control. A typical telemarketer is going to call somebody and say, do you like drinking water? Yes, I like drinking water. Yeah, of course we all do. Do you like clear water that's free of lots of chemicals and has a bad taste? Again, yes, I do. Do you want to buy this new blah, blah, blah that we're selling? No, I don't. <laughs> that's a typical telemarketer. You don't want to be that person. All right, well then don't be. Maybe, are you interested in relisting your home? No, I'm not. I get it. That makes sense. I feel the same way you do. You had your home on the market for six months. It didn't sell. You're probably feeling a little bit angry. Yeah, I am. I feel the same way. Now, just out of curiosity, when a home doesn't sell, it's either price, presentation, or marketing. Now, just out of curiosity, which of those three do you believe is the reason your home didn't sell? Now move them into a conversation. We started with no. And now move them into a conversation that creates curiosity. That moves to, you know, if I could pop by and take a look at your home and I can share with you why I think it didn't sell. Just in case you're possibly interested in selling in the future. Would it be worth 15 minutes of your time to see why or how I'm selling blank number of homes every month. Would that be, would you be interested in seeing that? Okay, just a different way to look at it, all right? Now, prospecting is one of your opportunities with lead generation. I've already given you three different ways of prospecting for somebody owners, expired circle prospecting. There's others, but those are the top three. Now, marketing. Marketing is anything that you're doing that is attracting business to you. So pay-per-click is marketing, uh, building out a great YouTube channel that's creating people reaching back to you is marketing. Uh, farming is marketing. You're looking for people to reach out to you who are potentially interested in buying or selling a home. Uh, gold letter campaign is marketing. And it's a great idea. You're simply sending a letter to everybody in the neighborhood, letting them know the market is still good. Homes are still selling. Matter of fact, they're selling pretty quickly and they're selling for top dollar. And we have buyers that are interested in moving into your neighborhood just out of curiosity. Who do you know that's thinking of selling their home in the next six months? That's asking somebody to reach back to you. You, you, the whole idea behind marketing is you have to have a call to action attached to it every single time, all right? For an updated market analysis on your home, text blah, blah, blah to blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's marketing. And I'm all for this. If you're hitting your goals 100% through marketing, and you're not prospecting, and you're doing what you want to do in this bucket right here, that's fine. Now, repeat and referral business, I would tell you this is probably the best way for you to build your real estate business. The whole idea behind your repeat and referral business is build a big database. Your business is directly proportionate to the size of your database. Your database is directly proportionate to the size of your business. The idea behind build a big database is 7% of the U.S. population who own homes move every year. 83 million homeowners in the United States, 6.2 million sold in 2021. Now, what that means is if you have a database of 500 people, these are 500 people that you know, who know you, who like you, and would potentially do business with you. If you communicate with them systematically, key point, write it down. The whole idea behind that is if I have 500 people in my database that I'm building relationships with, that I'm adding value to, I'm creating top of mind. So when they think of real estate, they think of me, 
I should close 35 sales from those 500 people that are in my database. That's 7%. Now let's just say it's 5%. Well, that's 25. Can you live with that? What if I told you that's just repeat business? That's not the other R. That's not referral business. Another 5% should come from referrals. Who do you know that's thinking of selling their home in the next six months? 5% of 500 is 25 sales. Now you've got 50 sales from 500 people in your database. Now you're gonna say, John, I don't have 500 people in my database. No worries, add one a day. Here's how. Hey, Beth, my name is John Dietz. I like to keep my friends and family members updated on the real estate market. That simply means that I send them interesting information on the real estate market once a month. And I call every three or four months just to check in. Would it be okay if I added you to that group? Now, is Beth going to say yes? Maybe, maybe not. And who cares? Because somebody will say yes. It's lead generating like a duck. Just go quack at the next person. Somebody eventually is going to feed you. If I'm asking 20 people a day, the question that I just asked Beth, at least one person is saying yes, more. It probably is gonna take five conversations to get one new ad to your database. You try it out, you track your numbers, you tell me what you're getting. Now, if you got two a day over the next year and you're working 50 weeks, five days a week, do the math, that's 250 days times two, 500. There's your 500. Now you've got 500 people that know you, like you, and would potentially work with you if they were gonna buy a home or sell a home, who would give you referrals if you're creating value for them and you're staying in touch with them. All right. Recapping, this is free. This costs money. This is free. Now, when I say free, I'm not counting the cost of sending handwritten notes. I'm not counting the cost of sending uh, cards during the year, like for their birthday and anniversary and holidays. Yeah, I know that costs money, but, and for the most part, we're talking free. Now, marketing, how much should you spend? All right, I would tell you on average about 10% of your GCI. So if you're making $100,000 a year, 10% of that would be $10,000. Spread that out over 12 months. You've got roughly $800 a month that you're spending on marketing. Watch your money, hold your money accountable Play red light, green light, which means don't. when you spend money, it's red light. You're going to stop. No more spend until you see a result for the money that you spent. And then it's green light again. It's also lead with revenue. So if you're brand new and you haven't sold a house, start here, start here, add this when you start making money. Now, every day, I want you to focus on... <clears throat> What would your business look like if a third of your business came from prospecting, a third of your business came from marketing, and a third of your business came from repeat and referral business? This is a safer route because the market changes. And when the market changes, the phone stops ringing. Those incoming referrals stop. The marketing leads that you were getting in a hot market are less when the market shifts. And then agents start looking for new ideas. What can I do to generate business because what I did isn't working anymore? Well, if you start out with a marketing plan that is focused on building your business through prospecting, marketing, and repeat and referral business, then you are ahead of everybody else because everybody else won't notice that what they're doing isn't working until several months after. It's not going to apply to you because you're already leveraging all three. Now, what if every day these three 
buckets of lead generation added just one. One new possible buyer, one new possible list um, listing. We're 250 days a year, you have 250 pop opportunities in your pipeline and lead follow-up, which we're gonna get into tomorrow, is going to lead to a conversion ratio for you of 10%, 20%, maybe 30%. It depends on how well you master follow-up, but what if it was 20%? You've got 250 opportunities in that pipeline by adding one new one every day. And at the end of the year, you've closed 50 sales because you followed up and because you effectively worked the lead generation model. All right, I hope you got value. Uh, questions?